the bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western Theater. From Hollywood comes your all-star Western Theater, starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage, with songs and a story of the West. My name is Cottonseed Clark, and here they come, riding your way with a song of the West, the Riders of the Purple Sage. Riding, roping, in the blazing sun all day, singing, swinging, and the travel on my way. Rocking, roping, grinding cattle all day long Singing and a-swinging to a cowboy song Riding, roping, in the blazing sun all day Riding in the saddle all day long To a long and lonesome cowboy song Riding through the burning desert sand To the land and country where a man's a man And I'll go riding, roping, in the blazing sun all day As I travel on my way, riding, rocking, roping, branding cattle all day long, singing and a-swinging to a cowboy song, riding, roping, in the blazing sun all The cowboy's work often took him away from the ranch headquarters for days at a time. And on those occasions, he packed his own food and had to do his own cooking. Today, most men don't have to do their own cooking, and perhaps that's why they enjoy playing chef at a barbecue or picnic, especially when the meal is made a substantial one by the addition of good Weber's bread. For Weber's bread is a firm, even-textured loaf that adds enjoyment to any meal, whether at home or on an outing. Be sure to include plenty of Weber's bread on your shopping list. Family and friends alike will enjoy the longer-lasting freshness and distinctive flavor of Weber's bread. That Will Never Grow Old is a favorite love ballad of yours that you folks have asked the writers of the Purple Sage to sing. You'll like it still more as you hear your favorite men of the musical West singing Good Night, Sweetheart. West for this week's adventure with the Riders of the Purple Sage, Boy Willing, Al Sloy, and Jimmy Dean. Yeah, 
Yeah, here they come. The riders of the purple sage. Down from almost any place that means a month's pay in their jeans, and, well, then on again. Funny sort of fellas, poor Al and Jimmy, always riding over into that section of the pasture where they really have no business at all. But leave it to them to find the grass a little greener and the business a shade rougher. That must be old Lem Hogan's place right over there. Well, I hope so. We've ridden far enough to get here twice. <laughs> well, all I'm hoping is he's got a job for us like the fellow in town said he did. Claimed Hogan was having enough trouble for a dozen men. Yeah, oh, maybe tell us to get he... mixed up into some kind of trouble. Now, if you ask me, we ought to be looking for something peaceful to do. We always wind up right in the middle of something that's none of a doggone business. Oh, you're still carrying on like some fussy old woman. Yeah. Well, why shouldn't I? I want to live to a ripe old age. <laughs> well, here we are. Who's going to do the talking? I got more sense than you two guys. Let me do it. Yeah. Well, then yeah. start thinking of what to say, because this must be old man Hogan coming here now. Boy, he looks madder than a bramer bull, too. You just ain't a kidding. All right, you men. What you doing on my property? Well, we thought maybe you could... Just... If that nosy kind of woman sends you here, then you better start riding on. I ain't no mood for making deals. Now, look here. We just... Won't... You do the looking. I took as much nonsense from that old hen as I intend taking. Now, go back and tell her whatever she sends you here for. The answer is no. Now, just hold your horses. Eh? If you'll stop letting off steam long enough to tell us what you're talking about, then we'll explain our business here. You mean old Luella May Carter didn't send you here? Ah, uh, we never heard of her. Well, then maybe I've been a little hasty. What was it you boys wanted? Well, we came out here looking for a job. Eh? But right now, I've got my doubts as to whether we want to work here or not. A job? You bet your bottom dollar I got jobs galore. I need men like a baby needs milk. Well, then what's the pay and when do we begin? Forty and pounds. What do you say, boys? Well, I reckon you can count on us until something better comes along. Well, good. Now, take your horses down the corral. I'll have one of the boys show you to your bunk. After that, come into the house and I'll give you a line on your work. All right. Now, boys, your job is to ride my boundary line on the east from one end to the other. Cover it like a blanket all day until the night riders come to relieve you. What's wrong? You having trouble with trespassers? Yes, worse than that. The adjoining ranch is owned by an old battle axe named Luella May Carter hmm. and her silly daughter. They run the spread with the help of a half dozen gun flicks. Well, what does that got to do with our work? Plenty. You see, it's like this, son. I'm yeah. setting an old score with that old biddy. The only water in that section of both our ranches is Cripple Creek. And according to the survey, that creek is on my property. And I've exercised the right to protect my property by fencing her out. Well, ain't there enough water for both of you? Son, there's enough water on that creek to rust the stomachs of every cow this side of the Mississippi River. <laughs> well, then why have you fenced her out? Well, sir, about two months ago, she had her property line surveyed. And it showed that my east pasture barn was setting 14 inches into her land. And you know what that old, that old she-cat did? What's that? Why, she went to the law. Made me move my whole barn over that measly little 14 inches. Hmm. Why, if she'd been a man, I'd spun her around like a button on a barn door. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're getting even with yeah, it. Yeah, you bet your bottom dollar I am. She's having to haul water five miles in order to water her stock. <laughs> and she's foaming about it. Well, I don't understand why she wanted you to move your barn over that little old 14 gate. Ah, she's just mean and ornery. Right now, she's beat up building a, a feed barn plumb up against my barn. And that's where I got her. Well, what do you mean? Well, I wouldn't tell my closest relative if I thought he'd drop dead any minute. In other words, you want us to line wide that fence and keep the Carter gang from using a pair of wire cutters on it. Exactly. Well, I don't think this is the job we was looking for. Now, look, boys, I need you. Don't worry, Mr. Hogan. We'll take the job. Well, good for you. Say, do you know what you're getting us into? Oh, I know. Just keep your shirt on. Well, Mr. Hogan, the boys will be on the job the first thing tomorrow morning. Hey, what do you mean, the boys? Well, you'll have to do without me a couple of days. i got to get back in town and tend to some business for my family. Your family? What in the cat hurry? Oh, something personal, Dean. I'll tell you guys about it later. Well, you boys work it out among yourselves. That's fine, Mr. Hogan. I'll be back in two or three days and join Al and Jimmy. Right now, boys, let's head for the bunkhouse. What do you say? about your family. Yeah, and what's more, I don't like the idea of being a target for a bunch of gun clicks. Now, don't get yourselves in an uproar. I just got an idea. Yeah, you always get an idea. And your ideas are always getting us into trouble. Well, what is this brainstorm you've got? I'm going to ride over to old Lady Carter's place and go to work for her for a day or two. Have you lost your crazy fool mind? Don't brag on them, Dean. Okay. <laughs> now, look. There's a lot of unnecessary trouble going on between the Carters and old Hogan. And I aim to get to the bottom of it. Well, what business is it of yours? None in particular. Just got a hankering to find out what this is all about. 
Well, that don't beat all I ever heard, then I'll put in with you. <laughs> right now, let's get some rest. There's things to do tomorrow. <laughs> Now, just a minute, ma'am. Now, you I... heard me, and don't talk back. I straight back from where you come from and tell old Lim Hogan I ain't after striking up no bargain. Listen, I don't even know any old Lim Hogan. Well, you rode in from that direction. Well, that's the fault of the road. It runs that way. Now, what do you want? Well, I'm looking for a job. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Get down, stranger, and come in. Glad to see you. Always can use an extra hand or two. Just fixing to have breakfast. Come on in and join us. Now, that's better. Don't mind if I do, ma'am. Oh, Sam. Take this man's horse down to the barn. He's going to set a spell with us. All right, Miss Carter. Come right on in, son. My name's Carter, Luella May Carter. Glad to know you, Miss Carter. My name's Boy Willing. Well, it's good to know you, Willing. Right now, I would uh, have a dozen fried eggs and a pound of bacon stick to your ribs. Now you're speaking my language. Then follow me. Good. Say, that's a nice-looking layout you got here. Oh, best in these parts. It's a shame there ain't a lot of peace and contentment to go with it. You mean you're having trouble? Well, I didn't come at you with that shotgun to be funnin'. But I'll tell you about that later. Right now, let's get some grub under your belt. I'll go along with you on that. Oh, Millie, sit next to the plate. We've got company for breakfast. All right, Mother. Just hang your hat on that towel horn there, Willing. I'll fix the wash pan and get your towel. Thank you, ma'am. Who is it, Mr. Oh, Hello. Hello. Willing, this is my daughter, Millie. Millie, this is Mr. Willing. Willing? I sure am. I mean, uh, howdy, ma'am. Mr. Willing is going to work for us, honey. Well, that's awfully nice. Yeah, sure is. Uh, that's uh, what I was thinking. <laughs> That was a mighty fine breakfast, Miss Carter. Well, glad you liked it, Willie. Now, about that job, I take it you're a stranger in these parts. That's right, ma'am. I think you'll like it, Will. Oh, I'm beginning to think that, too. Good. Now, the work I got for you ain't no picnic. Well, I'm not used to easy work. So what's it like? Well, first, let me tell you. On the next ranch, just west of it, there's a no-good old skin flinting reprobate that's got to be taught a few tricks. Now, Mother, don't bring that up. Why, you'll scare him away. Well, I'm not very brave, Miss Millie, but I've fast made up my mind that nothing's going to scare me away from here. I'm glad. Now, look, you two stop making calves' eyes at each other till we get our business settled. Well, excuse me, ma'am, I... Oh, uh... no need to apologize. I ain't blind. Now, look, son, you look to me like you've got brains, so I'm going to give you a chance to prove me wrong. Yes, ma'am. Well, the old feeble brain that runs the next ranch has got my water supply cut off, but there's some way to outsmart the old buzzard. I'm going to give you the lowdown in the whole thing, and then you're on your own. It's like this. Old man Hogan has got his creek fenced off, so my cattle can't get no water. Well, it looks like your mother's giving me a pretty tough job. Trying to figure a way to steal water from that creek without Hogan getting wise to it. Well, this feud between Mother and Mr. Hogan worries me to death. It's been going on for years, but never so serious as it is now. In other words, you don't approve of all this squabbling. Well, I'd be a lot happier if you could figure a way to patch up their troubles and, instead of getting that water. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And there, I think you have an impossible job. Not if you help. I'll do anything. Then I can't miss. But first, we've got to figure out how to get that water. After all, your cattle have to drink. Oh, I'm afraid I can't help you there. Look, Miss Millie, how far is it from Cripple Creek to that big water tank of yours? Why, it's only about 300 yards. Then I want you to ride into town this afternoon and have the well supply company to send out a thousand foot of one-inch pipe. I don't understand. I'm going to pipe that water from Cripple Creek through the wheat field into your storage tank. It'll give you an endless supply of water. But, but Mr. Hogan has been riding up and down that creek bed night and day. I know it. And Mr. Hogan's day men will help Mrs. Carter's day men lay that pipe. Are you making fun? Just leave it to me and don't ask any questions. Yes, I will, but, but how, how is this going to get us out of the feud between them? Well, that'll come later. Will you help me? You know I will. And this will be just between the two of us? Is that a bargain? I'm willing. <laughs> Why, 
like the silliest thing I ever heard of. Old man Hogan would blast us out of the country if he knew about this. Oh, we'll take care of old Hogan later. Yeah, well, we don't more than get a job till you get us all involved in some kind of foolishness. Now, don't get excited. I've got this thing all figured out. Come on, let's get busy laying that pipe. Well, Miss Millie, it's all finished. That storage tank will fill from dry in two hours by just turning a handle. Well, I'm afraid it'll be a real war when Mr. Hogan finds out about it. Oh, he won't find out. The pipe is too well concealed in that field of wheat. But it won't be long till we have to cut the wheat. Hmm. You didn't have to think of that. Oh, anyway, besides, uh, by that time, Hogan and your mother will be billing and cooing. Oh, I hope you're right. But, but what's your next move? Well, I'm going back to call on Mr. Hogan with a story about your mother that'll bring him to tear shedding. <laughs> I met her in town with her daughter. Say you did. And when she found out that I was working for you, well, she broke down and told me all those things. Well, and I just can't believe it. I can't believe that Luella May Carter would admit that she was wrong. Well, she sure did. Yes. And in no uncertain terms. Yes. That she would never forgive herself for treating you like she had. Well, I just have to admire anyone that would admit their mistake. And about making you move that barn of yours over 14 inches. Yes. She almost cried when she told me how cruel she was about it. Well, son, I've done some pretty mean things to well me myself. I reckon that people lose their better judgment and senses when they start to infringe on one another. It looks to me as she's done more than her share of apologizing. Yeah, that's right. The least I can do is to meet her halfway. Tell you what I want you to do, Willen. You go to Mrs. Carter and tell her not to feel so badly. Tell her I forgive her every mean, low-down thing she's ever done to me. Well, I'm sure she'll appreciate your liberal understanding, Mr. Hogan. Yeah. I'll write over at once. Good. <laughs> Amazing, Mrs. Carter. Well, I simply can't believe the old hypocrite would admit it. Oh, isn't it wonderful that he did? Sure is. I was just riding by, on our side of the creek, of course, when I run into him, and he really bends over backwards telling me how bad he'd been. I think it's wonderful that this feud has come to an end after all these years. Well, just between us, when I was a spell younger, I was mighty fond of Lem Hogan. To think that he went to the trouble and expense of laying a pipeline from his creek to my water storage tank. Well, it sure was nice of him, all right. Mother, why don't you invite him over for supper tonight? Well, that's a wonderful idea. I'll send him a letter. Will you take it to him, Willie? Be glad to, Miss Carter. Then I'll be back in a few minutes. I'll go right. All right. How oh, isn't it just too good to be true? Well, so far, so good. Now, the big problem is to keep them on a friendly basis after they find out we've framed them. I just hope that will take care of itself. I'll tell you what you do. Get your mother to spruce up and look her best. Leave it to me. You'll bring Al and Jimmy back with you? Why should I invite competition? What do you mean? Well, I've got you all to myself now, and where women are concerned, Al and Jimmy's friendship means nothing to me. Is that nice? Well, in a way, it's mighty nice for some time. Here you are, son. Take this note to old Lem and tell him not to disappoint me. Well, I've got things to do. Come, Millie. You've got to work on the supper. I must get my nice dress out and iron it. <laughs> Luella May, that dinner was wonderful. It sure is, Miss Carter. Well, I'm so glad you can enjoy it. You know, this is so much better than all this fighting and quarreling we've been doing, don't you think so? <laughs> Miss Millie, pass me some of them potatoes. Sure, here you are, Jimmy. I, um, I just want you to know, Lamb, that <laughs> I've forgiven you for everything you've done. <laughs> you, you forgiven me? Oh, she means she's sorry that this all happened. Oh, yes, yeah. Well, the same goes for me, Luella May. I'm forgetting all the things you've done, too. Uh, pass the gravy. Oh, would you I... have some gravy, Al? I don't mind if I do, Miss Millie. Uh, it's, it's your nice to see old friends forgive each other. Yes, yes, it sure is. Oh, here comes Sam, our handyman. Yes. What is it, Sam? Miss Carter, the water tank is overflowing, and I can't find the handle that turns the cockeyed thing off. Oh, oh. pass the chicken, quick. Water? Water in your oh, tank? Oh, the handle's next to the ground on the back leg of the tank, Sam. Oh, uh, thank you, Miss Carter. But don't reckon it uh, hurts the waste of that water now since we got all of it we need. I'll tend to it right away, now. <laughs> you know, for a minute, I thought he said your tank was overflowing with water. Oh, now, Lamb, you're just trying to be modest. Yes, yes. The boys have already told me the wonderful thing you did, and I think you're mighty nice to do it. I don't... That is... Have yes. some kraut, Mr. Hogan. Uh, don't mind if I do, Millie. Always did like kraut. 
Sam, after all that's happened between us, I think I should share a little of the expense of the water pipe. What if uh, say pass another piece of that bread there? I don't think uh, don't think I understand the well of me. I'd like to have some uh, more hominy there, please. Oh, now, Lamb, you're being modest again. More coffee, please. Now listen. Now listen, wait a minute. Let's not beat around the bush any longer. What's all this talk about water and what did I have to do with it? Do you mean that? Are you serious? Never more serious in my whole life. You haven't by any chance run a pipeline from my creek to your water tank. Have you, Luella May Carter? I did not. You did. I did. I've been checked. And I'm beginning to think I've been. I must have. Now, we can well, explain this, Mr. Hogan. There's plenty of explaining to do. If this has been a trick to pull the wool over my eyes, I'll make you pay and pay and pay and pay. Luella May Carter, you, you old battle-like. Ah, oh, you, you mean him out. Do well. You too, Mr. Hogan. You're in Ms. Carter's home. Now, quiet yes. down. There's a way to settle this thing and carry on with the goodwill you had for each other a few minutes ago. Oh, it's all our fault. Trying to bring you two together again. But this water, I don't... Well, I might have known it was too good to be true. Why, yes. I... Mother, I... Mr. Hogan, now both of you settle down. All right. Well. This was all I was doing, to bring you folks together. Yes. And now you're both being pig-headed. Huh. Now, be honest. Wasn't it nice to be friends again? Well... Yeah, I reckon. Yes, it was. Oh, I've been a pig-headed old fool. No, I've been the fool, Lamb, and no, I'm I going have. to let bygones be bygones. Mm-hmm. Well, that's mighty decent of you, Luella May. I've carried my grudge too far. And to prove that I mean it, I'm, I'm going to break down here and now and tell you of the ace card I had up my sleeve. Well, that's being a real man, Lem. <laughs> Remember when that uh, surveyor said my barn was 14 inches on your property? Yes, Lem, and I'm sorry we had trouble about that. Then you built your food house plumb up against my barn after I moved it? That's right, Lem. I'm sorry about all that. Well, I just want to make a, make a clean breast of everything. So I'll tell you about it right now. When I moved my barn over, I moved it over 24 inches. <laughs> and now your feed house is sitting 10 inches over into my property. Oh, that's <laughs> all right about that, Lamb. I... What was that? I just said to show Why are you... 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 And the feud kept going on just as before. Heard with the writers of the Purple Sage in today's story were Miss Daphne Drake as Millie, Miss Ruth Parrott as Luella May, and Joe Forte as Lem Hogan. Now here once again are the writers of the Purple Sage with an all-time favorite of yours. Put on your old gray bonnet, boys. On the old farmhouse veranda, there's that silent and Miranda dreaming on. The days gone by Said she, dearie, don't be weary You were only bright and cheery But a tear, dear, dims your eyes They're not tears of sadness, Alice They are tears of gladness Tis fifty years today since we were wed then the old man with dim eyes brightened, and his stern old heart had lightened, as he turned to her and said, Put on your old gray bonnet, put a little ribbons on it, while I did go round into the shade. Through the fields of clover, we'll drive up to Dover on our golden wedding. It was in the same old bonnet with the same blue ribbons on it In the old shade by your side That I drove you up to Dover To the same old field of clover To become my blushing bride The birds were sweetly singing And the same old bells were ringing As we passed the quaint old church where we were wed that night while stars were gleaming, the old couple lay dreaming, dreaming all the words he said. Put on your own gray bonnet, put a blue ribbons on it, while I hit old up into the shade. Through the field of clover, we'll drive up to Dover on our golden
Ever since some rancher of Long the Road decided that he'd better devise some method of identifying his cattle from that of his neighbors, branding has been an important part of cattle raising. Brand identification is important in the bread baking business, too. But you don't need a brand to recognize Weber's bread. You can tell it by its firm, even texture, golden brown crust, and distinctive flavor. Weber's bread has been an outstanding favorite with Southern California families for many years because it's not only good bread, it's good all the time. And for newcomers who have not yet tried Weber's bread, it does have an identifying mark. It's the familiar blue gingham wrapper, a brand as famous as the bread is good. So buy Weber's bread when you go shopping. You'll like it. Back to our men of the West from out of the West with another song of the West that you've been waiting to hear them sing. The Riders of the Purple Sage and one of the great Western classics of all time, Red River Valley. another week come and gone and it's been mighty nice being with you again. We'd feel mighty good having you drop in again next week. That goes for Al Sloy, Jimmy Dean, and all of the riders of the Purple Sage. This is Foy Willing saying so long and good luck to you all. From Hollywood, you've heard your all-star Western set. A V.M. Bear production starring America's great Western singers Foy Willing and the riders of the Purple Sage. My name is Cotton C. Clark, inviting you all to be on hand next next week for your all-star Western Theater. This program came to you from Columbia Square.